me as a man, I got to be willing to open up and allow you to teach. That don't mean that you trying to take my spot as a man. I still got to be vulnerable because you're my wife. Now, this is where the patience come in at. Okay, I got to be patient with my, I got to be patient with my husband because if I'm not patient with him, I could scare him away. Brave Arts community, he is a husband. He is a father. He is a teacher. He is a speaker. He is an inspirational speaker. He is an author of the book, The Devil Thought He Had Me. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Wendell White. How you doing, sir? What's going on, bro? How you feeling this evening? Man, I'm good. Busy, that's but you know, productive. Yep. Yeah, that's that's the that's the main thing. That's the main thing. <laughs> For sure. Uh for those who might not know. Uh, you were on the show before, so if you didn't get a chance to check out that episode, go check it out. That was Wendell's first interview. This is his second time around. Can you tell us about the book that you wrote, The Devil Thought He Had Me? Can you give us a quick synopsis and let everyone know where they can get that book at? Um, the Devil Thought He Had Me is really just based off my testimony. Um, growing up on the south side of Chicago, um, basically no mother no father joining the gang at an early age and just going through all the ups and downs in life not knowing you know and uh really really that book is really based off the grace of god like we use that term so um freely man by the grace of god but when we really understand what grace is and god sparing our lives not really giving us what we deserve and when you read my book the devil thought he had me value one and two i just shows you the obstacles of one not making good decisions um, not having people around me to, um, you know, to push me to be the best me that I could be. So I had to find, I had to learn how to find me at an early age. And then um, just all the times God spared my life, and, you know, me being shot and me being kidnapped and put in the trunk and beat with best and left for dead for drugs and money. It's just a lot of things that I just break down in the book that, man, if it wasn't for God on my side, man, I wouldn't be here. And um, you can get the book at, at Amazon. Um you can get it on, on Amazon and on, and on Kindle. If you if, For those that like it on Kindle, you get it on Kindle. And it's called The Devil Thought He Had Me, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And it's actually a great book. Actually, somebody actually reached out to me today. A production company out of Delaware actually reached out to me today and want to sit down with me, man, and talk about the book, man, trying to make the book into a movie. So, man, I'm excited about that. Wow. Congratulations. So, are, are are we the first ones to know about this? Yeah, man. I ain't even told my wife yet. She ain't even got home from work yet. So, yeah, y'all the first ones to know, man. Y'all the first ones to know. See, Brave Arts community, that's what you get when you listen in, when you watch. You get exclusive like this, especially with special guest Wendell White. Man, that is, congratulations, man. We kind of talked about that last time, right? About yep. somebody picking up your movie as a script, right? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And then it, it, it happened, man. You know, it's just about patience and waiting on God's timing. And everything gonna happen at his right time. And I'm not saying, you know, they're gonna be the ones, you know, to, 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 to get the book. But I am saying that it is going to be a movie. Somebody is gonna get the book, you know? And it, man, that all I need is that one. That one, that one call going, man, that's, that's the, that's the, that's going to open up the door. Now we're going to get 10, 20 more calls, you know? So whenever I'm, when, when, whenever I, I feel like, man, um, God is talking to me because it's going to be life changed, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to leave generational wealth for me and my children and my grandchildren and things of that nature. So they just can't come with nothing petty. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to come with a bag, man. You know what I'm saying? For me to give over. Because this is my life, man. This is my, this is my story. You know, and, I, and, and, and I'm not saying, you know, we do this for the money because I do it to help people. But at the end of the day, man, God God, God gave me a testimony. And guess what? I, I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that, that the family going to be straight if I'm going to give up everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I, man, things I could have lost my life for, things of that nature. So, man, we're going to be straight forever. You know, the white last name going to be a household name off of these people, whoever get the book. You know what I mean? It could be the people with Delaware, Spike Lee, whoever wanted it. 50 Tyler Cent, Perry. but, man, they got to come with a bankroll. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, I'm not mad at that, man, because, you know, you, you've been through a lot, man. You don't look like what you've been through. Appreciate <laughs> it. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, so 
Because I heard Wendell on Brunch with Besties podcast. Shout out to those wonderful ladies. And I heard him and I was like, I got to reach out to this guy. <laughs> and this yeah. is our second time around. So I'm glad that we connected. I'm glad yes, that sir. someone yes, is picked up your story because it's phenomenal. So if you haven't, make sure you purchase the book. I'll have that linked up in the bottom as well. So you can purchase that book. I was on your YouTube channel the other day. And I realized you was reading The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell, one of my favorite uh, authors. He inspired me. Of all the laws mentioned in the book, which two inspired you the most? Um, law one and law 11. Mm -hmm. um, law one is um, the law of intentionality. And um, law 11 is the, uh, the law of trade-offs. Yeah, and, the, and, and why I say in the law of intentionality because we don't even understand, a lot of us don't even understand that growth doesn't just happen. You do have to be intentional about growing. You have to be intentional about, you know, just think about this. Think about we in the new year, right? Mm -hmm. we, we nine days into the, into the new year. Mm -hmm. How many people, the gym packed right now, the gym packed. Everybody want to lose weight. Give them the give them the give them the middle of February. <laughs> it's gonna be back to normal because nobody gonna be intentional about doing it anymore. Because like like he even said in the in intentionality, he what he say uh, motivation get motiv motivation get you going, but it's discipline that keeps you growing. So mm -hmm. if you're not disciplined in the area. You know, you will easily fall back to do the things that you used to do, but you still have to be intentional in doing these things. Even when it when it don't feel good, you got to say, man, I'm intentional. So with that, when I first read the book, when my mentor first gave me the book and asked me to read it, and I and I read it because I done read the book like seven, eight times. You know what I'm saying? It's that good. Like that's this one of the best besides the Bible, probably outside of my book is like the best book that I've ever read. You know what I mean? So just being intentional about doing things the right way, being intentional about changing, being intentional about being a good husband, being intentional about being a good father, you know, being intentional about being a good friend, a good business partner. These are things that we have to be intentional on because growth doesn't just happen. It don't just happen. Because if we did, why would people have to grow? If we just grew into these great people from the time we was out the mother's womb, why would we have to grow? We would just wait for the time to just get to a certain age and we just, man, I got wisdom, I got knowledge, I got understanding. You know, it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. because a lot of us, if we never been in, in, if we never been in conducive places to grow, we don't even understand what growth even looks like. Because when you could, uh, one person may think when you say growth, they may think your bank account. Mm -hmm. Man, my bank account, man, long, long as I got some money, that's still not growth. There's a lot of rappers out there got money, but don't have no sense to go with it. You know what I'm saying? Drug dealers have money. You know what I mean? So that you, you still have to be intentional about growing you inside, who you are inside, because your bank account is not who you are. Your car, the clothes you drive, that's not who you are. Who you are is who you are on the inside. Who life do you change every day? Who life do you touch every day? Who do you make smile every day? It costs nothing to be kind. Who are you kind to every single day? But guess what? You got to grow into that. And then the law of trade-offs, that's my favorite law of the whole book. Because the law of the trade-offs is just make you understand that if you put nothing in it, you're going to get nothing out of it. It's going to be some things you're going to have to lose. Mm. to gain some things that you want. You're going to have to do some things that you've never done before to get some things that you've never had. So that means you're going to have to cuss friends off. You're going to have to cuss relatives off. You're going to have to put the bottle down. You're going to have to put the blunt down. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to cut the side chick off. You're going to have to do a lot, bro. I'm just being, I'm, I'm just, I'm just being honest with your listeners. I'm just being totally honest. You know how we do it. Yeah, it's going to be some things that you're going to have to trade off. You have to give up to grow up. That's what the law, the, 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 the law of trade off. So you have to give up to grow up. So what are you willing to give up to grow to that next level? 
not go to the next level. Let's grow to the next level. What are you willing to give up? A lot of people not willing to trade that off. You know what I'm saying? I, it, it was hard for me to stop selling drugs. <laughs> Man, bro, I'm just being honest with you because you telling me, you telling me to stop doing something that I've been doing since I was 12 years old. Stop doing that and have faith in somebody that I can't see. And, and, and that's supposed to make sense to me. <laughs> when when I knew, man, if, if if the bill was paid, I can go get that in ten minutes. A phone, or just a phone call away. But in order to get what I what what God really has for me, I have to cut some things off. I have to trade some things off. I gotta say, okay, that go that don't go against that don't go with the will of God. So guess what? I gotta let that go. That don't go with the will of my marriage. I got the I can't I can't hold on her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's things like that, bro. That we 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 and, and a lot of us struggle with that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us struggle with that. So man, yeah, this this, this book right here, man. And that's why I think I read it so many times, and I done bought so many copies for different people and gave it to them because I just think if you really get down to reading it and really understanding it, like every night. Even when I go to bed at night, I got I got I got it on my um my audio, mm -hmm. and I listen to it. I will put my earbuds in and I just fall asleep to it. You know, just to have it in my just to have it in my system. Like you know, mm -hmm. I I just believe like my mentor has told me. I just believe before you go to bed at night and you say your prayers, you you should listen to something soft or something that's gonna grow you, so you can really have that peace in your sleep. You know what I'm saying? Because it's sometimes I wake up, bro, and I'm 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 saying. Stuff that I done heard John Maxwell say over the thing, but not understanding subconsciously, I'm still getting it, even though that my body is resting. My mm -hmm. brain is still getting that, getting that. So, yeah, man, it was that. This this is an awesome book, man. I I would encourage your readers, man, to um to just if if you're a reader and you want to grow, and um you want to grow in your 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 business, your marriage with your children, you know, personally with yourself, man, this is a great book to read. And um, study by, live by. It. I'm talking about it's in my book bag every day when I go to work. The whole nine yards because I always, even when I talk to my kids at work, man, I I, I bring them some of these laws and I tell them, man, this is these are certain things you're gonna have to do to go to that next level. So, yeah, man, it was a great book. Yeah, for sure, man. And I'm glad that you did a challenge on that on YouTube. So for those who haven't seen it, make sure you go follow Wendell White. <clears throat> on uh, YouTube so you can follow that challenge as well because. He has some awesome nuggets in there that he dropped some gems. So go and check <laughs> man, that I appreciate out. It, bro. Yeah, man, that was powerful. And then he has a book too called, uh, I think, Winning with People. That's a really good one too. That helped me out with my leadership skills. I also kind of want to backtrack on what you said about being intentional. I love that you said that because with this being a, a relationship slash finding marriage and love again show, you have to be intentional if you want to remarry, if you want to get married, if you want to fall in love again. How does that look being intentional? Because I think a lot of times when they we we live on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's we true. just we just do. Rarely do we think. Uh, when I was in church the other day, the pastor was talking about. He said, "You don't have a problem with commitment issues." He said, "Because you committed to credit card debt, you committed <laughs> to being overweight." You know what I'm saying? He was like, so you don't have a commitment problem. He was like, you just got to know who you're going to serve. He was like, because we we are created to serve. Either you're going to serve That's God good. or you're going to serve idols. You know what I'm saying? That's so it good. just depends That's on. Good. Yeah. You know, so I was like, man, he challenged your boy. So I was like, man, I got to start being intentional and thinking about what am I committed to? What, I'm, I, what am I going to be intentional about? So I'm glad that you talked about that. That's good. That's that's good. That was deep right there. What he said. That was deep. But that's real though. That was yep. real though. You know yep. what I'm saying? Man, Wendell, he was getting there. Man, he he got in everybody's business. He said he said you committed to credit card debt. You committed to being overweight. He said you committed to to uh, alcohol. He said you committed to porn. You committed to gossip. You know what I'm saying? He said people will be coming up to him. I just can't. He said yes, you can. I said, oh my God, but that that's good, bro. That that was awesome. That was man. awesome. 
Yeah, yeah it right. Make you think though, it, it it just make you think. It make you open your eyes up, and it make you think, and you say, "Man, I that that's that's true. Mm-hmm. Like that's true. Like I'm 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 committed. I'm committed to dying. Mm. I'm committed to dying, and 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 I'm not committing to committed to life, living life, eternal life. Mm-hmm. But I'm committed to death. You know, because man, it, it feel good to the flesh. You know that that that's the thing. It, it, it feel good to us, like we don't you don't want to let it go. So you know, man, man. But that's good though, bro. That was real good. That was real good. Yeah, man. Like I say, you know, we got to be a living sacrifice, right? Yep. Wendell, if you created the laws of marriage, because we were talking about a John Maxwell book, what would be your top three laws of marriage? I think my my top three. Um, laws and, and and when i read this question i'm like oh that's 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 nice but i but but i don't and and, and i will have to i will have to, excuse me i will have to use john maxwell the 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 um the law of trade also be one mm-hmm. that that that'd be number one um and then i think the 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 law of boundaries would be two mm-hmm. and then i i believe the law of love would be number three. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and why, I, and why I put love in that because people don't understand, bro. And, and people that get married every single day, they really don't understand what love is, man. Come on. Because one is they yet to fall in love with themselves. So when you don't love you, it's impossible for you to love anybody else. And you know that, you know, they in love with this, they infatuated with this person. I'm not going to say they in love with this person. They infatuated with this person that they said I do to, but what, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what are this, what is this marriage? What is the foundation of this marriage? What are the grounds of this marriage? What is this marriage built on? You know, for you to say, I love because love, listen, man, and bro, you know this. Love it covers it covers the multitude of all faults, right? So if if love covers the multitude of all faults, that means I love your flaws. Mm. I, I I love your flaws, it, even though they're flaws, but I love them because you come with them. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I love you enough because it say love is patient, right? Mm-hmm. Love is kind, even when I don't want to be kind. Love, love, love is still that soft answer when I still want to yell, when I want to get my point across. I want, I want to be right, but it, but love is understanding. Mm-hmm. How, how, how it, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have a one up and say, I was right this time. And you was wrong that time. Can we get an understanding? That that's love. That's love saying, baby, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't even care about that. Like, let's get an understanding. L- let's, let's have peace. You know, is, is, is it going to be perfect? No, it's not going to be perfect, but the, the good should outweigh the bad and the bad shouldn't get that ugly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so with that, and I think I would I would do the law of love first, mm. and then I would do the law of trade offs. Mm. Because one thing about the trade offs, a lot of people don't that get married don't understand that, especially men, especially us men, we believe we you know we can still kick it with our boys the same you know we can still go hang out the same you know a lot of men don't understand that you know when man man let me call wife and check in right quick let her know i'm like they looking at you like what you mean check in you grown no 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 no. i am grown but i'm married you know what i'm saying so it's a, it's a lot of things that you will have to give up to stay peace so your house can keep peace you know, you got to trade some things. You got to stop doing some things. Why? Why would I? Why would I run with a with a group of men that's not married anymore? It's not nothing wrong with my boys that that I grew up with that's not that that's not married. But at the end of the day, you have a you you have a single mindset. I can't do what you do. 
So why put myself in that type of sense, situation and that type of temptation and things go all the way wrong and guess how your friends gonna look at you? I ain't tell you to do that. So it's a lot of things us as married men we have to be willing to let go with that law, that trade off. I got to, I got to let some things go. I got to let some things go for my marriage to be happy. I got to let some, some, the, the things that I was taught in the street, I have four, five women at a time and all this and all that. These are things you got to let go. And yeah. guess what? You ain't going to be able to let it go by yourself. You're going to have, you're going to have to have a guy on your side to deliver you out of this to help you become the man that he created you to be because you're not going to, you would never be able to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You would, you would never be able to stop drinking, doing none of that stuff that you want to do. You would never be able to do it without a God on your side because you just not strong enough. Mm -hmm. And I done been down all these roads that I'm talking about. And let me tell you something, man, it, you, you not going to be able to do it by yourself because we, we not going to have Bible study or nothing like that. But at the end of the day, bro, you, you understand you know, you you understand what I'm saying. So it's just like what I'll say is, man, just just change your mindset. Change your mindset. You know, the, the law of the trade off. Trade that old mindset and get a new mindset. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, yeah, man, that that law of that love and that law of um the trade off and that law of patience. Just mm -hmm. being patient, just being able to be patient, being able to be patient. And, and understand, I remember when when I first got married, I've been married in almost nine years now. I remember when I first got married and they say the first five years is the roughest years, right? Yes. So me and my wife, me and my wife, I was I was dropping off at work one morning and we was just going through a rough time, man. You know, I'm, it was just rough. So on that particular morning, everything was cool, though. Like everything was cool, which I thought. <laughs> So I'm driving, and I just, some told me to look at her. When I look at her, she was just bawling, bro. I'm talking about just crying her, her poor heart out. Before I could say anything to her, I heard the Holy Spirit say, be patient. Be patient. So I didn't say nothing to her. Mm -hmm. I didn't say nothing to her. I kept driving. I dropped off at work. She gave me a kiss. She got out the car, went to work. By the time I left out the parking lot, she was texting me. And she was saying, I, I really appreciate the fact you just let me have my moment. Mm. You just let me have my moment. You didn't try to fix it. You didn't try to say nothing to correct it. You just let me have my moment. And that's that patience, bro. Sometimes you just have to say, I understand my wife is not me. She's not, she, I'm not her. And I just have to be patient with her. I had to be patient with my wife on this walk. My wife introduced me to church. She introduced me to church, to the church that we, Unity Gospel House of Prayer here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She introduced me to that church. But I grew spiritually because I grew spiritually faster than her because God wasn't working on my wife. God used my wife to get me to the church. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't get that at first. Yeah. I'm saying, how am I doing all this? I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And you just not, because I don't want to be patient. Mm -hmm. So because I didn't want to be patient, I'm frustrated. When God is saying, Negro, I've been patient with you 30 years. <laughs> Who is you? To, to Now you rushing her. Now she's supposed to get it in two years. Who, who are you? Mm -hmm. And bro, that's when, when, when we learn that in a whole marriage, not just the husband, but the wives. And the, when we learn that and understand be, you might, you, you, you might have some things together, but you ain't got it all the way together. Be patient with me. Mm -hmm. You knew who I was when you married me. So be patient with me. Do I, am I telling you, I, I still want you to push me, still push me. To be the best me that I can be, but still be patient. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may be some things that you have to teach me. It may be some things you have to show me. I have to be, as a man, I got to be willing to open up and allow you to teach. That don't mean that you trying to take my spot as a man. 
I still got to be vulnerable because you're my wife. Now, this is where the patients come in at. Okay, I got to be patient with my, I got to be patient with my husband because if I'm not patient with him, I could scare him away. Mm -hmm. I could push him all the way away because now it's like, oh, you, you, you trying to look boy because you know us as men, how we think I'm the man, I'm the man. No, let her help you. But guess what? It still got to be, you, you got to do it in love and you yep. still got to be doing it patiently. Yep. And you got to let me move at my pace. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying let me just do nothing, but let me move at my pace. Mm hmm. Yeah. Until I get comfortable with this. Because for so many years, I was never comfortable talking to women. Like, mm -hmm. like opening up with, with women. Yeah. I, I did everything. Man, I, I, I've been by myself, by myself, on my own, all my life. So it took me years and years to build up that trust to be able to cry in front of my wife. Mm -hmm. And talk to her in that intimate type of setting without feeling like, without feeling like, man, I just gave my manhood away. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. guess what? She had to be patient with me. You know how many arguments and things that you don't talk to me, you don't open up to me. What do I supposed to do? How do I supposed to help you? But it still took patience, even though it didn't always feel good, but she was patient with it. Mm -hmm. And it was some things that she did that I had to be patient with her mm -hmm. because I knew if I tried to rush it, that's that's not that's not that's not God time and that's your time. So guess <laughs> what? Now I'm rushing something that that you really just pushing her away. Mm -hmm. You pushing her away because now you're not treating her like a husband, like a wife. You treating you trying to treat her like your daughter. You're mm -hmm. not treating me like your husband. You trying to treat me like your son. Yeah. So now this is where the tension coming in. That mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. that 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 love that patience. And that trade-off, I think when we really look at those in a marriage um, and really take those serious, mm -hmm. it's a lot we can learn from each other as a, in a marriage. It, it's a lot that you will learn from your husband, your wife, and it's a lot that you will learn even from the children. Yep. Be like, wow, like, like, wow, this, this is these are really deep steps. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, bro, it all got to be done in love. At the end of the day, if none of that stuff is done with love, it's, it's you can't tell me to be patient and yelling and screaming at me. You <laughs> yeah, know what right. I'm saying? So yeah. it all got to be done with love. So, man, with that, yeah, that, that's that's just that's just what it is, bro. That And that's my opinion. No, I hear you. No, and, I, and that's why I asked you, because I knew you had some wisdom to drop on that, because uh, I was taught that if you allow your spouse like help them to become who they want to become not who you want them to become absolutely when you do that then it reciprocates or it should be reciprocated right where they're helping you become the best version of yourself because and i had to learn this going through a divorce i had to learn that you can't change people that you again you got to be patient and you got to be where they're at and also having a pulse on your marriage. Like, where are we at right now? Because your spouse could be changing before your very eyes and you don't know it. Yeah. 10 years down the road and all of a sudden you're two different people looking at each other like, who are you? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got to you gotta keep a pulse on that. What is the biggest mistake? And you know what, bro? The piggy, hold on. You know what? The piggyback off that. Like, because yeah. that's, that's so good when you just said, like, keep a pulse on that. Because, like, every year on New Year's, me and my wife, we always write down like the pros and the cons of, of last year. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The things, the things that worked and the things that didn't work. Mm. The things we never want to revisit again. The things that, you know, like, man, if this came up again, how we can handle this? Because it 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 kind of it kind of help you. It kind of help you stay grounded and stay and stay knowing, like you said, that pulse of your marriage understanding like who you have who is this person that they're not changing overnight they're not changing that i just i just looked at it and be like man i ain't noticed that yeah you i this been like this for six seven months you know what i'm saying so when you said that that that's really good because it bro just look at the divorce rate it's the highest ever the divorce rate is the highest ever is because i can't love you for the moment 
when, when we get it married, marriage is not, I love you for today, but tomorrow I'm gone. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have to deal with some stuff. It's work. You have to put the work in and you have to be intentional about putting the work in. I don't just buy my wife flowers on, on our anniversary and on her birthday and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I still like taking her to the movies and taking her out to eat and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Stuff oh, like yeah. that. Like all the things that I did when we was boyfriend and girlfriend, guess what? I still love doing that stuff for her right now. You know what I mean? And, and, and a lot of people, they, they just stop doing that. Yeah. They stop being boyfriend and girlfriend. My wife is still my girlfriend. I'm just married to her. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? I had to I had to learn that again when when she came and said, we just don't do nothing no more. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean? And getting, getting complacent of getting comfortable with just man, this wifey, she cool. We could sit back, watch Netflix, watch the fire stick. Woo, 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 woo. No, she 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 wanna go eat some popcorn. <laughs> yeah, she you know wanna actually saying? go out. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and and, 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 and and that's why I love my wife, you know, with the ups and downs we done been through, but it just make us it make us better. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it 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 makes us better. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't did I don't did some things where she should have left. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? She loved me. She forgave me. She, you know, you can't take forgiveness for granted. Of course. I appreciate you forgiving me, but we just it try to try to make you get better. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And and, and that's and, and that goes back to being intentional, right? Being intentional. <laughs> you got to yep. be intentional because one of the pitfalls to marriages and, and if and even if you're in a long-term relationship, you know, that whole thing, if that's what you do, there's, you can get comfortable with them being good to you. You can get mm -hmm. used to them washing clothes, uh, washing the dishes and balancing, you know, paying the bills. You can get comfortable with that. And yep. take that person for granted, and next thing you know, they like, I'm out. I'm tired. I'm tired. Yeah, tired. I'm tired. And that again, that goes with the pulse, and that goes with understanding what's going on in my house. Like my old pastor used to always say, he keep his head on a swivel because he have to pay attention to what's going on in the house. Because a lot of times as men, we so laser focused. Uh, there's a book called Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti. I don't know if you ever read it. No, I haven't. That sounds good, though. Yeah. Because so, so you just said that I get the concept. That's yeah, amazing. right? Yeah. Right. Because men, we're like waffles. We're these little squares, and we live in these boxes. Women are spaghetti. They intertwine. The sauce, they the meat, everything, everything is all. The, yeah, right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's why she can be cooking, talking to her girlfriend, helping uh, your daughter clothes, with her homework. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's good. That's yeah. good. So men are like wobbles because brothers get on Call of Duty. He start playing Call of Duty. He in his box. The house can be on fire. He thinking it's the video game. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hey, that's true, man. That's true. I gotta order that book, man. I gotta read that. I have to read that. Yeah, I gotta man. read it's, that. And it came out some years ago, but it's it's still a great read, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great read. Uh, what is the biggest mistake men make in marriage and how can they fix it? The biggest mistake, I believe, I'm, I'm going to speak for me. Okay. Um, Just taking my wife for granted. Mm. Take, taking her for granted and just, and just, and believing, and believing that she's supposed to forgive me. Mm. You know, because, because, because God, God said, you know, you know, man, you try to, Man, God forgave you and all that. No, she get tired. It, it, eventually, if you keep doing the same thing, eventually she's going to leave. She, everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has a breaking point. So if you if you keep running around here acting like a kid, guess what? She's going to leave you to your childish game. <laughs> and, and, and God is going to make sure the life that you supposed to have with her you're gonna watch her have it with somebody else. Ooh. Be because, because, because not only did you, not only were you selfish, but you did her wrong when when she she did nothing but loved you. Mm. 
what, what was she perfect? No. Of course. But at the end of the day, the with with the things that you did, and we're not taking score here, but you was way worse than her. Mm-hmm. You you was way worse than her. The 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 things the things that her flaws they were forgivable. Your flaws was forgivable as well, but the flaws that you did they hurt it. It's not that I don't love you. I don't like to keep. You can't keep when when a, when a person that you really love hurts you. It, it it's a different type of hurt. Yeah, that's that's a different type of hurt. So, so you can't say, I, that's why I say you can't keep using forgiveness and take forgiveness for granted because are you really sorry? Mm. You're not really sorry. You just keep, you sorry you got caught, <laughs> but you, you're not sorry because you're taking, you're using, it's just like steady going and repent and ask God, forgive me for the same thing every single day. God is saying, man, if you don't get away from, if you don't stop talking to me, I, I just listen. Just let my grace cover you, fam. Mm-hmm. Just let just let my grace cover you until you get serious. Now, when when you get serious and repent with a with a with a with a with a with a whole heart and not keep on giving me this lip service, like the Bible said, they they lips say this, but they hearts are far away from, from me. me. Yep. So so when you when you keep quit giving me this lip service, then me and you can talk. But don't don't keep coming to me asking me to forgive you for the same stuff that you keep doing every single day. You 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 not sorry. That's that that you 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 can't be sorry. And, and, and I think that's where I had to really learn with Ben and then watching when me and my wife would go through the things that we go through, how my children would be affected by it. how I watch my kids cry and the uncertainty of them or what's gonna happen or are y'all getting divorced and you know everybody walking through the house and everybody moping everybody sad you are not just affecting you you're affecting everything that's connected with you it's being affected by your decisions so what are you going to do to fix it and i believe when 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 men when we when we when we take ourselves out that box that you were just talking about. When we take ourselves out that box and understand is 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 whether you the breadwinner or not, it's not all about you. That's right. And if you are the breadwinner, you don't use that as a tool to do what you want to do and do wrong by your wife. You you don't use that. You don't you don't you don't do that. You know what I mean? So it's like I have to look at my I have to look at my wife and I have to say. This is why I believe all marriages should be under the umbrella of Christ. Because when you can look at your wife and say, this is my wife, but this is God's daughter. So I don't want to make her daddy mad. So I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, so when you, when you, when you think about going to act a fool, you're going to say, no, nah, because I got to answer to her father. Man, listen, and and yeah. that comes with a certain conviction. That co- that comes with sonship, right? Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Because if 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 you if you don't get the 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 grace of God, and if you don't understand uh, His divine order and and things of that nature, and His love for us, uh, it's easy to to go and act a fool. You know, easy because it's based on your feelings. Yeah. You know. That right now, the microwave society, that where we are, where we became. I want it right now. Yep, right now. I- instant gratification. Man, but guess what? In the long, in the long term, <laughs> it's killing. Yep. Down the line, it's killing, and it's yep. killing everybody that you connected with. It's killing your marriage. It's killing your business. Your kids acting a fool at school. Everything that's going on is really because of you, especially if you the man. Man. So listen. when when things start going wrong in my household, bro. I always ask myself, what are you doing wrong? Mm-hmm. It's something that you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I can always trace back to anything where I f- slip and fall at. I can always go back and trace it because I was cool all the way up until right here. Mm-hmm. And then I slipped and fell. And look, everything went down the drain. Because mm-hmm. change, change starts with me. I always tell people, if you if you want to create change, start with you. 
Yeah. You know, people, we it's it's easy to, to shift the blame, but if we could take accountability, because your situation might not change, but if you change, your whole mindset changes. Like everything changed because you changed. And yeah. then the funny thing is with marriage, because uh, people always blame it. The divorce rate is higher the second time around. I believe it's 67 or maybe like 74, 67% or 74%. I think the divorce rate is higher the second time around. Wow. And you know why? They <laughs> because, because they don't take accountability because they say my first marriage was her fault or it was his yep. fault. So yep. they don't take accountability. But if you think about it, when you create change, it's going to make your spouse do one of two things. Either they going to get with the program or either they going to end up leaving. Because that's it, that's they're, all. Yeah, they're not used to the change. And, and I tell people about it's this dance that we have. There's a dance. I was telling my homeboy the other day. We create dances in all of our relationships. And that dance is, I know this can trigger Wendell if I say this. Mm. Like... It, you automatically go on autopilot. If I say this to Wendell, he's going to act this way. So we create this dance. So in wow. order for us to create change, somebody got to change the dance steps. Mm, that's and, good, bro. Yeah. And when somebody creates the dance steps, it's going to... Have you ever seen somebody try to do the tango or something on the dance floor and they trying to show somebody how to do the dance and mm -hmm. it's awkward at first? But once they get it, it looks smooth that's that's what we create in our homes every day because a lot of times we're on autopilot so when we get into an argument instead of us having this same dance because we argue about the same stuff because it's the same responses instead of acting out you're going to change the the dance you're going to say you know what i take accountability for that i'm sorry and i'm going to do my best to try better next time guess what happened you totally unarmed your spouse because that's so good bro on the real that's so good when they they looking for the dance because we have programmed our spouses to act and think a certain way because of the way we behave but when we change we're going behavior, back and forth back and forth back and man that's good yeah that's good bro yeah let, let, let me be transparent for me and I, I don't know i'm interviewing you but let me just no 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 do your thing do your thing real quick um and, and and glory to god now my wife is a firecracker my wife is she she will keep it real with you at all costs but when we got together and she would come to me a certain way i was like wait a minute so i'm gonna snap back at you so we would have these bouts where either one of us was shut down and we started this dance so it's like, okay, one of us is pissed off. Now let's create the dance of silence. You know what I'm saying? Let's create the dance of ignoring each other or not saying what you really feel. So now the more times we have arguments, the more we keep doing this, now we created a dance. But until someone decides to break it. So I remember one day we got into it and I apologized to her. And I was like, you know what? I have to do better. I said, I, I, and it wasn't to try to make everything better. I had to be right. honest you with You weren't myself. trying to manipulate the situation. You was just holding yourself accountable. Right. Now, my wife was ready to go off because she knew. She was like, I know this Negro going to shut down. But I took accountability for my actions. So my wife had her AK-47. She was ready to, she was ready to blast because <laughs> she knew. She was like, I already know what's going to happen because we created a dance, a dance that I created out of, out of my immaturity. So I said, you know what? Once I unarm her, now she can't she can't come strapped, ready to shoot me now because I've changed the dance. That's good, bro. I'm always remember that. You just helped me. You Amen. just showed helped me. That that that's 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 amazing. Amen. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Next time, yeah. Just next time, you know, and and, and we're we like we all are 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 all guilty of it. And what happens is the beautiful part of it, Wendell, is you create a new dance and what happens is now you're creating a healthier dance. You're creating a, a smoother dance, a more uh, updated dance because yeah. you, 
you've trained your spouse to think different. That is that is that's amazing, bro. You you just helped me, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. You just helped me, Jack. That is amazing for yeah, real. Man. I'm yeah. still in that too, man. I'm just letting you know, man. <laughs> so next time I have men's class with my guys and we talked about something, man, on our Thursday men classes and it's something like that, man. I'm so going to lay that dead out. Of, I know everybody going to be, oh my God. Yeah, I got this from my man. So I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> hey. I'm letting you know right now, man. I've used that because, bro, that makes so much sense because that's the truth. That's the truth. And we just, we just going to, we in a tug of war fight over nothing over nothing my old mentor told me and god rest his soul he told me this and he was already oh he was married to his wife 50 something years and he was maybe telling me this almost 20 years ago he said sean and this is old school stuff he said sean whenever she let out her lamb you let out your lamb you know what wow. i'm saying so all he was saying was when she's ready to bite be sacrificial now, this isn't for everybody because Jesus was countercultural, right? So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people right. can't grasp that. But if you have somebody that's mature that you're married to, if they're a lion, they're not going to sacrifice you because they are mature. They like, oh, you're being vulnerable with me. I'm not going to destroy you even though I could. Absolutely. But that comes with maturity. Yes, sir. Uh you know what I'm saying? So when he was like that, I was like, okay. So in order for, again, to change the dance, somebody has to be vulnerable. Somebody has to be willing to say, I'll get on the cross and sacrifice. I'll take the sacrifice. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be the sacrifice. That's good, Sean, man. I ain't going to even lie to you, man. That's cold. <laughs> That's cold. I ain't yeah. going to let me back. You got me sitting there thinking. You know what I'm saying? As you talking, I'm just thinking about all the disagreements me and my wife have got into it got into and how it'll lead to us. She'll be upstairs. I'll be downstairs. You know what I'm saying? She'll, she'll, I'll go sleep on the couch or she'll go sleep on the couch and we wake up tomorrow and we do it all over again. And she at work upset. I'm at work upset. We ain't said nothing to each other all day. Ain't a text. Ain't I love you. Ain't a nothing all day. And it's all over nothing. And it be all over nothing. And guess what? You created that dance. Yeah. Bro, so, that's why I said, man, oh my God. Yeah. And that was so, just, that's so simple. That's so simple. How you just broke that down, right? That's so simple. And all we have to do is just apply these little nuggets that we learn. Just apply. Mm -hmm. Just apply. And that's that, that's that, that's that, that law of the trade off. Give up the pride. Drop the pride, trade the pride off, and I'll be the sacrifice. To keep the peace, I'll be the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop this pride. I'm going to trade my pride off, and I'm going to pick up peace because I'm willing to just say, you know what, Renisha, I was wrong about that. That's on me. That's on me. I I, 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 I got it. Your, your boy got to do better. Man, mm -hmm. please forgive me. We going to work through it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that I mean, I'm gonna try to never let that happen again. I ain't talking about going to be the foolishness. I'm just right. talking about the. I'm talking about the the little arguments that lead up today, and it be those little arguments that lead up to the days of not speaking, days and days of not speaking. I ain't spoke to you in three, four days, and me and my wife just had an incident like this around New Year's, and yeah. it was over something that had nothing to do with neither one of us. <laughs> it be like that, right? <laughs> it, it, it had nothing to do with neither one of us. It just happened at our house. You know what I'm saying? Man. And she bad, I'm bad. I'm just talking about it's and 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 when we finally started talking three days, I just I just hugged. I said, I miss you, man. You know what I'm saying? And she bad, I miss you. We laid in the bed. This is the first time we done laid in the bed in two, three days together. She man, I'm like, man, when I when I touched the skin, bro, I'm just like, man, I miss you. <laughs> I just got my foot on her, like, man, I miss you, but I had missed her so much, though, bro. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, how did we get here over something that ain't got nothing to do with us? And that's because we have created that dance. Like you said, every time we get into something, this is how we react. We, 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 we play tug of war with one another, and we sweep it under the rug. And guess what? As we walking on that rug, it's going to come back from under the rug because yep. we never deal with it. Yep. We and, never and that, deal with the situation. And, and that comes with being intentional. 
Yeah, and that comes from being attention. Because yep. when you're in the heat of the moment, that's when you got to be careful. Because the, the Bible talks about uh, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine, right? Yep. So it's them small little arguments that, that trip you up. So sometimes, because uh, my wife and I, I was, last week, man, I had a tough week. And I didn't, I didn't convey how I felt. I, I shut down because I felt like I didn't want to put anything else on her plate. I was like, eh, I don't want to feel like I'm about to burden her because the kids are acting up and work has been tough and family stuff going on. And I was like, eh. so I shut down and she was like, I want my friend back. She was like, you're not the same. She's like, you come home and your energy is off because I'm bringing work home. Mm. And, and and again, Wendell, this is what happens when you change the dance, because if this would have happened three or four years ago, she wouldn't she wouldn't have had said nothing to me. So we both would have just been in the bed shut down. But and, and I'm not taking credit for this, but I helped change the dance. So now she's learning to be sacrificial when I'm off. Absolutely. Because I absolutely I, I've trained her by being a sacrificial lamb. It's the same thing like with Christ, right? He's a sacrificial lamb. He shows us in the, the way we should carry ourselves. And we are we carry, you know what I'm saying? We we are little little Christ in the world. You know what right. I'm saying? We his representatives. We his representative. So as men, and I always tell men this, change starts with us. Don't that's not saying that women shouldn't be held accountable. I'm not saying that. But if we are gonna be the leaders of our homes, we gotta be the example, starting with me. Because when they when I do these interviews, sometimes they just for me. I've been needing help. I've been needing help. I've been needing y'all to help me out. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, bro, I, I did, I did, I did a post this morning. And I don't know if you saw it because I know you were you would watch some of my posts. I did a post this morning, man, and I and, and so many people reached out to me and was just telling me, like, man, that was so dope. Like I really needed that. But they don't even understand. God gave it to me because I needed it. I was helping me. I was encouraging myself. <laughs> I was at a rough place. I was at a down place in my life. And when I was praying and God was giving it to me and he told me to put it on my on my social media platform, it was to help me. Because, But I'm going to help you because it's somebody that's going through the same thing that I'm going through. But God is saying, I need you to encourage yourself. Pick yourself up. Understand where you are in your life. Understand it's going to get better. Understand everything that you desire, I'm going to give it to you. But I need you to do this because I need you to get up. You finna go deal with these kids. And if you walk out this door and the, with the energy that you have right now, you would never be able to go help these kids. Mm -hmm. you, would, you would never be able to go help nobody that you finna come in contact with because you just, you, you all over the place. Your mind all over the place, your heart all over the place. So I need you to encourage yourself. So when they was reaching out to me, that man, bro, that was that I man, I man, I appreciate that. I like that. I'm saying, man, glory to God, glory to God. But as the day going on, I'm getting it. God, I hear you. I hear you. You, 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 you help somebody else, but you help me to help somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I yeah, we be needing that. We be needing that. Like, we we really, really be needing that. And like, you just made me really just think about. I don't, I don't mean, I'm not going to say me and my wife would never have another debate again, but no, we'll never have another argument again. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we, we, we going to fix it now. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? Somebody going to sacrifice. Somebody going to be the sacrifice. And nine times out of ten, it might be me. I'm willing to do that, to, that trade-off, to get that peace. You feel what I'm saying? So there we go. And one day, one day you might not be there. You might not feel like being a sacrificial lamb, but because you've set, you've changed the dance so much, you have changed the temperature in your home. She's going to get in and be like, you know what? My baby's been sacrificing. I'm going, I'm going to lay it down this time. Yeah. And then it makes it easier for you because now she's that safe place for you. You like, yeah, baby, so I'm so glad that you... You got that. that official one. Yeah, it, that, it was man, I, need, I needed you for that one. I needed that one about you. Yeah, that's that's good, bro. That's real good. I appreciate that, man. Nah, I appreciate man. that. It's all good. Man, I want to be respectful of your time, man. We've been we've been talking like uh we've just been having <laughs> hey, church. Hey, that's all the time. That's the last interview, too. We did that too. 
But no, I know, you right? Good, you good. Man, well, Wendell, let everyone know where they can get the book at once again, because I, I want people to get that in their hands. Let everyone know about the book and how they can reach you on your social media platforms. Well, my book, The Devil Thought He Had Me, Value 1 and 2, uh, you can go to Amazon and get it. Um, it's both both copies are at Amazon. Um, you can follow me on YouTube. You can follow me on my Facebook page at Arthur Wendell White, or you can follow me on my Instagram page at Wendell W underscore the number 24 at the end. And man, I'm on there majority every day, man. Just dropping jewels. Um, I don't got foolishness on my line. I don't, I don't, I don't do the foolishness. I'm just on there. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to help people grow to be the best them that they can be. And um, that's where we at, man. So man, man, I appreciate you guys, man. Sean, you know it's always a pleasure. Man, we gotta do something. We gotta do something, man. We gotta, we gotta do, we gotta do some, some, something else, something more. Um, I mean, I just be enjoying you, bro. It's just like, man, it's like we've been knowing each other 20 years or something. When we get together, we kick it. Like I said, man, you helped me tonight. You know what I'm saying? So um, I hope, man, the listeners, your viewers, man, somebody got help. Um, man, if they don't know God and, and the pardons that they send, I hope they get to know Christ, you know, because um, he, 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 he would change the situation. All you got to do is put him in the situation. He'll change it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this 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 is a tough this is a tough journey that we on, man. But we gonna get through it, you know. I'm not finna sit here and shoot coaches and just say, man, this always it's just pieces of cream. You gonna give your life to Christ, everything gonna get better. Ah, uh, you gonna think everything got worse when you give your life to hell. <laughs> but the thing about it is, man, he just exposed us to see, like, man, the things that we couldn't see at first, the things that the devil had our eyes blind to. So when you understand now that you know that's wrong and that's wrong, that's wrong. It's really not that is. That is that that is hard to do. It's just that you realize that your flesh just like what it likes and it wants what it wants. It's been trained, like you just said, with that dance. We dance it. That's how we dance with Christ. You know what I'm saying? We our flesh want what it want when it want it, and our spirits are saying, "No, y'all, you know bad, bad. Let God lead and guide you, and He gonna make sure everything right." So, man, I appreciate you, bro, man. Uh, yeah, for man, sure. praying for you and the family all the time. Y'all in the, you all y'all y'all in my prayers, man, and I and I appreciate this, man. I, I appreciate this. Yeah, for sure, man. I I want to acknowledge you for uh, being bold with your faith in today's culture because I know times have changed and stuff like that, and we live kind of live in this different world. So I just want to acknowledge you for that, man. I want to acknowledge you for being honest about your testimony and uh, the kids that you inspire, the adults you inspire. Uh, I just want to acknowledge you for being a, a leader. Uh, I think we are, aren't we missing that today in this social media age, man. Um, and just want to acknowledge you for taking the faith to be an author, to put in necessary work uh, for that to happen, because that takes work. People just see a finished product and just thought you woke up and did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's true. So um, I want to acknowledge you for those things, man. So continue to do what you do. I'm proud of you. Uh, Thanks again for taking some time to be a guest today.